Get your school holiday football fix these April school holidays with tailored football development sessions for all. Filled with skills, games and fun from accredited coaches. With options of single days and multiple camp days. The Football South Australia April School Holiday Camps. Sign up now at footballsa.com.au. It's never too late to improve your strength, balance, well-being and independence. Our Strength for Life program encourages all older South Australians to start moving and enjoy an active lifestyle, make friends, build strength and inevitably age well. Strength for Life sessions are offered in almost 100 locations across South Australia, with new sites opening all the time. Check out the COTA SA website to find your nearest location. Strength for Life is an individualised program which is delivered in a group setting. We aim to keep older South Australians connected with their community, um, preventing social isolation and also keeping their bodies strong, flexible, uh, managing falls and uh, keeping them engaged. We're super excited to be partnering with Football SA at this state-of-the-art location. It's a beautiful venue. It will really benefit the local community through the Northfield and Jeps Cross surrounding areas to be able to access Strength for Life. Um, and together we are working to improve everyone's futures. Hello and welcome to Adelaide City Park for round two of the Ghost Sunny Solar WMPL South Australia here in Oakden between Adelaide City and Sturt Lions. I'm your commentator, Seb O'Neill, joined by the first How are you going? Really well, thanks, Seb. How are you? Doing very, very well. Um, we'll go through the starting lineups in a moment just as both sides start to line up in the tunnel. And We'll start with the home side of Adelaide City, starting with number one, Abby Lucas, number two, Gabriella DeMarco, number five, Alice McCauley, number six, Nora Peet, number seven, Valeria Goyardo, number eight, Alana Ursino, number 10, Alison Atkins, number 13, Sophie Leginski, number 15, the captain, Bianca Gray, number 18, Grace Abbey, and number 19, Daphne McLeod. Going to the away side of tonight's Sturt Lions, starting with number three, the captain, Louise Brook, number four, Four, Brooke Powditch, number six, Isabella Barchese, number 16, Kaylee Wakeling, number 22, Isabella Connor, number 23, Ruth Sundquist, number 24, Florence Russell, number 26, Kurumi Saito, number 27, Nina Yamada, number 33, Iana Tuvi, and number 37, Rose Elston. As we now have both sides with the refereeing staff walk out onto the pitch, Haley, what should we expect, do you think, from tonight's game? I think a, a very fiery crash, clash and one that you know could be a little bit unexpected because of course we've got the Giants that are Adelaide City who had to come back from two all 
um, two nil down thank you pardon, from last week to have a 2-2 draw. Um, Sturt, of course, unfortunately lost 4-0 to LA Comets last week, but um, the more that this lot plays together, um, gets that experience together, I think we'll see them emerge as uh, a powerhouse of the WNPL. Referees today in the middle is Liam Tuvey with assistant referees Indiana Van Diesen and Tom O'Caddy. As we line up for this double header tonight at Adelaide City Park. Starting with round two of the WNPL, the only WNPL game on for this Friday night. Both teams start to shake hands. Of course, this game played in tribute to Ashley Young Haley. I'll go to you to explain more on this tribute match we're having tonight. Yeah, so Ashley Young was a, a great player and administrator of the game, and she unfortunately passed away in December. Um, too young from an asthma attack. So the LA City girls are playing tribute to her tonight. You'll see they are wearing orange armbands, which are her favourite colour. And then they've also got the purple ribbons in their hair to represent the Asthma Foundation of Australia. If you do want to make a donation towards that, then visit um, Asthma Australia website. And of course, I'm sure LA City will have it over their socials across the coming week and during tonight's match. toss being conducted in the middle as both sides enter their huddles. Sturt's second ever game in the WMPL after having a very successful season last year in the WSL where they secured promotion on the last day against their exact rivals, Mobry Vista as well. Yeah, that was a fantastic match to watch and congratulations to Setline for securing that promotion. Of course, new challenge this year now in the WMPL for them. Um, and they've got a lot of challenges. One, obviously, just being that promoted team that comes with challenges in itself. But also, they've had quite a rebuild. So if we look at their starting 11 today, there are only two players in that starting 11 who played in that team last year. Um, they're very experienced players in their captain Louise Brook and then also Flo Russell as well who was also the golden boot by a country mile <laughs> in the WSL. Goals. Yeah, 10 ahead of her nearest rival. So, you know, there's some place to secure for sure. <laughs> um, but then of course they've got a new coach in Frank Tavorty. Um Unfortunately, they've 
got a new assistant coach because Stephen uh, Maxwell did pass away only days before their first game last week, so I'm sure that could have also played a part in the result last week as well. Um, so some challenges to overcome. They're just needing time, I think, to gel together a little bit. Um, but I think we won't see a repeat of what we saw last week in that 0-4 loss with Comets. Half time, that game was only 1 0 as well, the yeah. way of Comets. They definitely held up well in that first half. Yeah, I think they'll take great confidence out of that. It was sort of just the final 30 minutes or so where they did concede the rest of their goals. Um, and the other thing with that game as well is the one thing they kind of have to their advantage is that they're a bit of an unknown um, to a lot of these uh, squads. But when they played Comets last week, the head coach of Comets is, of course, Dan, who was <laughs> the coach of WSL side. Um, South Adelaide, who often went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sturt Lions last season and even beat them. So they kind of lost that little bit of advantage that they had there as well. So we might see a different outcome today. Absolutely. Both sides finished in their huddle. Getting ready for kickoff. Kickoff will go to Sturt Lions to be taken by the top goal scorer for Sturt and the WSL last season, Florence Russell. Game now underway, starting with Sturt in possession. Back with Kurumi Saito. Playing a ball on the wide left, unable to get the touchdown. One of two exciting Japanese internationals that Sturt have picked up this season. Oh, there is a bit of a Japanese flavour in the league overall this season as well, kind of taking a leaf out of um, the book of Haruna Sugihara who <laughs> lit the league up last year and won uh, the Shirley Brown medal. And when we spoke with Frank at the season launch, he did mention, you know, their fitness is key, their skills, you know, that over in Japan they train almost daily. Um, and that, of course, inevitably makes them quite skillful and quite fast. So that's what they're hoping to bring to the team. Adelaide City with the ball now. On the far side from camera. That winning and then losing almost straight away. Still with it now. City just trying to get through. Abby still trying to find a way forward, does so. Has two in the middle, cuts it back. Just gets the timing wrong, but still with the ball. Cut back, this could be an early one. Well blocked for the corner. How dangerous does Nora look this season already? Only second game in. Provided a wonderful assist last week, kind of did all the hard work. Early corner for the home side of Adelaide City. In swinging ball, punched away by the keeper, only as far as the edge of the box. Pete. Just tripping on the ball there, but DeMarco still with it. Back with the captain, Bianca Gray. Out wide with McLeod. Uh, back with McCauley. City happy to keep the ball for this small time. Just losing out on the pass there. Ball with Kurumi Saito. Of course, coming over with Nini Yamada from Japan, previously playing with Asahi Intech Love Ledge Nagoya FC. Bit of a mouthful. Happy I got through it. <laughs> but as you said, a lot of Japanese players across, I mean, not only the women's league, but the men's league as well. It's a very inviting place, I guess, for those players to come and play. Free kick here.
Lawrence Russell on this free kick for Sturt. Floated in at the back post. Goal kick. Yeah, as you're saying, Seb, it's great that you know the WMPL is viewed at such a high level in Japan as that sort of stepping stone to the A-League W, even in the wider Australian community. You see um, making similar moves sort of over in Victoria where Kiwa Hawaii is playing with Western United. They're seeing that progression and that pathways that the WMPL can open up for them. Nice bit of possession for Sturt at the moment after they were sitting quite deep a little bit earlier. Ball still with Sturt on that left side. Going out for a goal kick. for any technical difficulties you might have seen on stream. This is, the game is not only 20 seconds in, or whatever it says. Say we're a good five minutes in. But we will keep you updated, of course, with everything that happens throughout this game, especially with Florence Russell on the ball. Top goal scorer of the WSL last season. Sunkist. Looking for the wide pass, unable to get to it in Adelaide City now with the ball. McLeod on the left wing. Powditch only getting it out for the Adelaide City throw in. Getting intercepted, but Pete winning it back. Back with Guyardo. Puts the ball in, but cleared away by Brooke, the captain. Well done there by Grace Abbey. Ball only to stirp feet. Blocked out. See now unable to pull that pass off and all the way back with number 33 Ayana Tuvi in the Sturt Lions goal. And a Sturt goal kick. Taken quickly and short. With Adelaide City again and Atkins. Guiardo. On the far side. Unable to keep the ball in. First name Brooke. <laughs> ball cleared upwards. Well done there. Yamada on the ball now. Parchesi. Saw, saw the speed of Florence Russell on display there. She was very much making a run. really important when this game seems to be quite compressed in the midfield. Ball on the right wing with Sturt. 
Mayweather pull that pass off and City get away with it again. Out for a Sturt Lions throw. All the way back with Brooke. Tries to get a touch pass, unable to. Not many options, has to go all the way back with Abby Lucas. One of the first touches of the football in this match. Great intercession by Abby Lucas. DeMarco plays it close to Abby. Lovely quick football here from Adelaide City. Good ball. Unable to get the head on. City with it. Let's go back. McCauley looking for the pass. Atkins. Sturt get away with it. Unable to get past because of the foul and getting the free kicker, Sturt. Right at the halfway line. Headed forward, cleared away by the city defence. On it now is McLeod. In the middle, Florence Russell will chase and continue to. She's on it now. Gets the touchdown, Russell. The shot, I think, just off balance, unable to get any real connection on it. That just shows how dangerous she can be, and speed really is her, her number one talent right there. Yep. You say Sturt's first real opportunity to get on the scoreboard this match, largely been with Adelaide City's attack in midfield as it continues to be now with Pete. Back to DeMarco. Has an option on her right in Pete. Will take it. Putting the ball in. Ooh. We're hearing some cries of pain from Nora which is not good at all. Possibly clutching her knee. Very, very important player for this city side, very experienced. Veteran returning to the club this year after a few years off. But has of course played for LA United and over in the MPL New South Wales as well. So we are fingers crossed that she does get back up. Having a, a decent game so far, Nora Pete as well. She's a very creative player. We did see her impact last week as well um, in City's second goal when McLeod scored off the bench. It was initially Nora's shot on target that was just spilled away, and then McLeod was there for the cleanup. So pivotal to this Adelaide City side who does need you know, those experienced players in amongst the youth that they've been seeing through in the, sort of the last season or so. She is up on her feet which is a good sign but for now Adelaide City down to 10. It's 
for this free kick, of course, tonight as well. Campbelltown play against Elizabeth Grove in the Women's State League, as well as Cove versus Mobry Vista, both at 8.15 at Campbelltown and Cove, respectively. Of course, one of those a rematch of the preseason cup final. Ball comes in, and a goal for Adelaide City. Happy to get on the scoreboard early. After being 2-0 down at halftime, good start for them. Beautiful header there from Grace Abbey, and I've got to say that's really deserved. She's been working very hard on the wing over on our side. And lovely to see her make an impact early. Last week she was subbed off at about the 60 minute mark, so great that she can kind of steady the ship in the first half. Well, Sturt, 1-0 down now, having to climb another mountain as they would have had to try last week. Certainly capable of it. Both cities' goals last week weren't from set pieces, so it's nice that you know they can add that, tick that off the checklist in round two, that they've managed to kind of score from all these different sort of circumstances. Just as I was saying, yeah, for I was really interrupted by the goal, Campbelltown versus Elizabeth Grove in the WSL, a preseason cup rematch, which went all the way to penalties a couple of weeks ago. The WSL is a very exciting one this year. It's really been turned on its head. Elizabeth Grove going from mm. kind of perennial bottom feeders to absolute contenders. You'd say the teams are a mix like Vista, Mori Vista, Mori Jets, South Adelaide, Grove, yeah. Campbelltown now as well. It's very hard to... And predict. only, only I guess, one and a half places, really, when you think about it, to go up yeah, at this stage. One guaranteed and one in the, in the playoff. Of course, seen Vista play in WMPL previously. Very close to <laughs> getting promotion again last season, but foiled by Sturt on the final day. And then foiled by Uni in the yes. playoff. <laughs> so Uni to stay up as well. We, of course, have seen um, Vista play at Piri Weeks come on over to the WMPL, playing for City this season. She did start last week on the bench this week, but I think that speaks to the depth of the Adelaide City side. Ball through, collected by Iana Tuvi. Yeah, the depth of their side this season, that they can have someone like that sitting on the bench ready to go. I think she scored about 13 goals last year in the WSL. She was eighth in the Golden Boot Race. Pretty handy to be able to call upon her if needed. Aubrey Vista that year had a good side. Leonardo as well mm. went over to West, West Adelaide. Yep. Just unable to do what Flinders did last year and just stay up. Yeah, we had exciting last rounds of both the WNPL and WSL last season. It's nice when it comes down. I mean, mm. probably not nice for the players, <laughs> but for us neutrals. <laughs> It's exciting when it, yeah, all hinges kind of on different games and outcomes. And just the way the WSL played out last year, that Sturt and Vista were playing that last round. And they have to keep the ball in, out for a Sturt goal kick. vocal on the side. Perhaps a little bit frustrated that although they have scored that goal that limited other opportunities I would say. Pass cut out well by Bianca Gray. Elston just letting it slowly roll out for her throw in. Push there by Alana Asino for the start free kick.
Ball cut out well there by McLeod. All the way back with Abby Lucas. Pressing from the front. Ah, Sturt trying to win the ball back as quickly as possible to try and maybe counter attack. City. Cut out. Very well read by Ruth there. Vital interception. That ball over the top and able to be kept in. Instead going for the Adelaide City throat. DeMarco going backwards. being jockeyed there by Yamada. Does well to get past McLeo. Unable to get the touch, Guiardo. DeMarco with the throw again. It was almost all by herself there, a lovely ball. Good to see Nora running quite well there. She doesn't seem to be hampered by what could have potentially been an early injury. Going all the way back to Abby Lucas in the Adelaide City goal. A poor ball though. Straight to Sturt. City now try and get forward, cut out again. A lot of turnovers of the ball in that quick transition area. Both coaches wanting to be wanting to address that <laughs> at half time. Ball goes wide. Still with it. Well done there. Was a beautiful turn by Connor. <laughs> Tries. Using a little burst of pace, Connor, but just not enough to get past. Still going now. That should be dealt with by McCauley. Only for the throw. Ball floating. Sure if that stayed. No, it's gone out. few float over that side. The wind kind of is blowing that way, but don't know if it's enough to <laughs> account for some of these balls. <laughs> Great to see Abby in goal in that number one keeper spot for City this year with Claudia Jenkins playing with Adelaide United. She was the uh, reserves players player last year for the club. And when Jenkins is available, she is the goalkeeper coach as well, so she's under... Pretty good treatment, sure. Yeah. Looks like someone's ribbon's fallen out as well. DeMarco. Atkins. Good ball. Pete. Looking pretty healthy on her feet already, which is good to see.
Tadic. Step front. Central with Atkins. Gives it away, however. Sir on here. Through Russell. Just battling. And Liam Toovey calling that as a foul. It's going to take quite a bit for Sturt to break through the that centre back pairing is quite established for City uh, with Macaulay and Sophie. going in to try win that tackle, unable to. Atkins back with it. Now with Sturt through ball, but out to DeMarco. Kept in, needing to chase. Needs to deal with it, does well. Atkins. Guiardo. Throw in just at the halfway line. Good battle there. Yeah, I think Kohar has just seen it. But can use your body without getting called straight away. <laughs> <laughs> She's just don't, gone done the same thing. Wasn't happy with the previous call. Gray making the run out on the left. She'll get to it as well. Ball comes in, easily captured by Tuvi. throw. Handball. And a stirt free kick. Which they'll want to try and make something of nearly half an hour into this one. It's to go out wide. This game is being played really quite narrow, which is surprising because City have a narrower park and they're still again <laughs> playing even more narrow. Chasing this one. Still getting the throw, however. Balter. No one in particular leading to the Adelaide City goal kick. A little too 
pretty much curl on that one, I think. So get it back once again. Headed downwards, unable to find a teammate. Well done with the footwork there. Yamada passing it backwards with Elston. Gets past one. Decides to put the ball in very high. Just into the hands of Abby Lucas. Quick to release once again to Gray. A lot of turnovers in the middle of the park. Both sides just unable to keep the ball under possession. Except in moments like these where they just like to build up. Not take too many risks. Ball now. City. McLeo. Tries to get the one two. I think that, yeah, will be going out for a goal kick. Too much on that one. I guess edging towards half time with a stoke, just want to remain strong, not concede anymore, and then enter the second 45 in more of an attacking manner. Getting away with it is Yamada. I think trying to look for the ball. I think that was meant for Russell, but intercepted. Needs to make a decision, decides to take it for the throw. Central. Battle off of it, however. Referee plays advantage. Cleared away. Still battling for it. Lovely ball over the top for City to try and get a second is offside, however. But the right idea. Free kick for Tuvi. Lovely ball through, just needs to hit it. Ooh. Great strike and a great goal. <laughs> 2 0 go Adelaide City. City side, very happy with that one. The reverse of sort of last week. <laughs> they were 2 0 down now. 2 0 up, probably a pretty good feeling for them to have a bit of freedom now. With about 10 minutes to half time, Adelaide City more than happy to have a 2 0 lead. Unfortunately for Sturt, unable to hold them out just that little bit longer. But they've shown glimmers that they're capable of a goal, Haley. 
Yeah, absolutely. They've obviously got their target person up front in Florence Russell. Just needs to time that run a little bit better. Or perhaps now that do we see a bit of a rejig, you know, they're very much playing a defensive back four now that they're tuning down. Do you kind of throw caution to the wind and just go for it and play a little bit more attacking? Atkins. Shaw City more than happy to go in at half time 2 0 up rather than being 2 0 down as they were last week against Adelaide Uni. Perhaps surprisingly, considering where City and Uni are at last season, of course, Uni having to stay up via that playoff. City making finals in the first game of the season. Only ending up on equal terms at 2 2. Just joining us, two goals for Adelaide City, scored by Grace Abbey and Daphne McLeod. Two and two for Daphne. Proved to be a very formidable signing there. City might look to get a third before the half-time break. Touched on. A bit too much, however. interesting to see City's signings this year. Of course, they're without the AEW players. Um, Dylan Hobbs and Izzy Hodgson. Izzy, of course, the golden boot for the club last year. But they've replaced them with players who are also very experienced and have played for the club before. And they're already proving to be game changers. I'm sure... All the WNPL clubs who have those A-League women's players will be happy to have those players back probably soon, considering Adelaide United. I don't think they'll make finals this season. They, they even mathematically can't. Off the crossbar. Cleared away. Well done by Sturt to not concede a third there. Still getting away with it. If that had have gone in, that was a case of Asino only scores bangers. <laughs> <laughs> of course, got goal of the week for her round one. Outside the box cannon, and then nearly <laughs> did it again there. But yeah, with the uh, L-League women's season, season starting to wind up, you would assume that start getting those WNPL players back sooner and quite a few of them do come back and play WNPL football during the season as you said Nora Peake Looking for the cross on the right boot. Looking for the effort from range, only blocked off by Saito. I think last season, Adelaide City, they were very sound defensively as we've touched on with the Sophie and McCauley partnership but they struggled to score goals in those early rounds I think they'll find a lot of confidence in the fact that 
They play one and a half games <laughs> and have scored four goals already. You know, they're starting to bleed that new set of player. Asino herself only very young, but won the Emerging Talent Award for the club last year. We've already seen what she can do. Onside is Abby. DeMarco to Atkins in the centre. Doing well to keep the ball. Well done by Adelaide City. Unable to keep the ball under control and just falling on it. Ball cut out there. Adelaide City throw. How good does DeMarco look this, this season as well? Previously with Campbelltown and with uh, the FSA State Program. Had a couple of knee injuries in a time, but very, very attacking on this wing. It's great. Because he had partnering quite well with Grace there. Free kick for Adelaide City to be taken by Alice McCauley. Want to find someone's head. In swinging ball. Headed away for now. Still kept in. The clearance not too convincing, but Sturt still trying to get rid. Having the effort only parried away. See that Grace Abbey is definitely the, the target for those set pieces. She's continually moving over to that right side when those set pieces happen and then comes and moves back over to the left. Valeria Guiardo on this corner. Has the option of DeMarco coming in close, but retreats that option. In swinging. Headed only upwards, straight back to Guiardo. Ball just put forward out of harm's danger. do have a player down during that bit of madness in the box. Does just give Sturt a little moment to reset as well and have a bit of a chat about where they go to from here. Of course, nearly half time. Very close to the halftime break now. And as it stands, City will be going into the break 2 0 up. A couple of little subgroups of Sturt players talking, kind of at the attacking players <laughs> having their own chats away from the bench. See Brooke Powditch. Just slowly making her way off the pitch, but I think they might be making a change possibly as signaled by the trainer. Whether or not they do that now, I'll wait until the halftime break.
try and hold off as much as possible to not use a, a sub window. <laughs> Warming up, we do see Louis Savard, who was with Adelaide Hills Hawks last season. So drop ball, which City will just go backwards as we get this half restarted but not too long left in this half, you'd imagine. But Sturt won't want to concede another one now. Still playing with 10 for the time being. We'll want to hold off any sort of Adelaide City attack probably until the halftime break where they'll try and make that sub rather than, as you said, having to take that window early. I do get away with it, however, Russell. Sturt bench up in arms that Brooke hasn't been allowed back on yet. As we see her come on now. Into additional time of the first half here at Adelaide City Park. Sturt with maybe a late opportunity flew through Florence Russell. Has taken the ball a bit wide. Have to manufacture something out of this opportunity. Only the throw it. So important for Sturt's confidence here if they can have something back. Again, any apologies for any technical difficulties. Adelaide City are only up 2-0. Not the forest stated on the scoreboard. Aggregate score from last week. <laughs> <laughs> so only 2 0 the way of the home side as it stands towards the end of this first half. But Sturt wanting an opportunity just before the break. A bit feisty down there. Booking as well for Grace Abbey. And a free kick as well for Sturt Lions as maybe their last big attacking opportunity before the break. To be taken by Florence Russell. Ball delivered in with power, or only into the hands of Abby Lucas. And there's that halftime whistle. 2 0 up, go Adelaide City at halftime. Hayley, what have you made of the first half? Yeah, I think we will probably see a bit of <laughs> a formation change from Sturt coming into the second half. They were playing very defensive um, in that first half. The back four just really did not move. I think now that the two goals down, they need to kind of rethink that they're going for that kind of one target person up top with Florence Russell perhaps they need to shift that up a little bit but is as we've mentioned it's kind of a game that's won and lost in the midfield we're seeing a lot of turnovers there um, a lot of interceptions in terms of Connor and some quiz for Sturr, Ali Atkins for City working hard um, so very yeah very interesting to see if Sturt come out kind of with no inhibitions in the second half and really just go for it at half time at Adelaide City Park it's the home side with the advantage Joyce in the second half as it stands Adelaide City 2 Sturt Lions nil.
Get your school holiday football fixed these April school holidays with tailored football development sessions for all. Filled with skills, games and fun from accredited coaches. With options of single days and multiple camp days. The Football South Australia April School Holiday Camps. Sign up now at footballsa.com.au. It's never too late to improve your strength, balance, well-being and independence. Our Strength for Life program encourages all older South Australians to start moving and enjoy an active lifestyle, make friends, build strength and inevitably age well. Strength for Life sessions are offered in almost 100 locations across South Australia, with new sites opening all the time. Check out the COTA SA website to find your nearest location. Strength for Life is a individualised program which is delivered in a group setting. We aim to keep older South Australians connected with their community, um, preventing social isolation and also keeping their bodies strong, flexible, uh, managing falls and uh, keeping them engaged. We're super excited to be partnering with Football SA at this state-of-the-art location. It's a beautiful venue. It will really benefit the local community through the Northfield and Jeps Cross surrounding areas to be able to access Strength for Life. Um, and together we are working to improve everyone's futures. Get your school holiday football fixed these April school holidays with tailored football development sessions for all. Filled with skills, games and fun from accredited coaches with options of single days and multiple camp days. The Football South Australia April school holiday camps. Sign up now at footballsa.com.au. I come to Australia end of 49. Finish up in Wyala for 12 months and then I settle in Adelaide end of 50. And then as a, a young fella when I saw all these other clubs with the soccer, the dancing group wasn't really good enough for me. Not enough. How should I say at entertainment? And then I had a couple of mates, and we talk about to form the Croatia Soccer Club because I used to be all these ethnic clubs.
Get your school holiday football fix these April school holidays with tailored football development sessions for all. Filled with skills, games and fun from accredited coaches. With options of single days and multiple camp days. The Football South Australia April School Holiday Camps. Sign up now at footballsa.com.au And the future is orange for Stratford. Flinders are in the lead. Rachel Quigley. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Comments to 2023 20, Premiers. Saved by Pomeroy. They had to go the distance and then some. Strength for Life is an individualised program which is delivered in a group setting. We aim to keep older South Australians connected with their community. Um, preventing social isolation and also keeping their bodies strong, flexible, uh, managing falls and uh, keeping them engaged. We're super excited to be partnering with Football SA at this state-of-the-art location. It's a beautiful venue. It will really benefit the local community through the Northfield and Jeps Cross surrounding areas to be able to access Strength for Life um, and together we are working to improve everyone's futures. And it's Adelaide Croatia Raiders time! Right out, the top corner and it's in in! A captain's contribution for Luke Klimek. Ready to end the stars for Nicholas Fucko. Oh my god! Oh. It's another one for my project! It's Fabian Barbiero! Your NPL champions, Adelaide United.
Welcome back to Adelaide City Park for round two of the Go Sunny Solar WNPL South Australia at the halftime break. It's 2-0 the way of the home side of Adelaide City with goals from Grace Abbey and Daphne McLeod as Sturt look to chase this one. I'm your commentator Seb O'Neill and joined by Hayley Routley. Hayley, after that first half, Got a bit feisty towards the end, to be honest. Yeah, it did, but just a little bit odd because it looked like it was kind of from City. Um, but I think perhaps because it's been a bit physical on the side, especially for Grace Abbey. She was getting a bit frustrated there. Start with a strong start, looking to get forward immediately. All the way back yes. with Lezinski yes. and now with Lucas. Yes. Good turn there on the ball by Ali Atkins. Through ball, but to no one in particular. changes from either side at the half. Seems like Brooke Paddage is trying to push through. The only step play warming up is Stenglin. Perhaps she's the one to come in if anything does happen. Start going from left to right in Adelaide City, right to left for this half. If you're just joining us. on that far side for Adelaide City. in the wall for Sturt Lions and two on the ball for Adelaide City possibility of a third right after half time cleared away only as far as oh what a goal from Ali Atkins the long range strike and another goal of the week contender coming from Adelaide Absolutely. City. Absolutely. Adelaide City are the score bangers. doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's one way to get past a, uh, a back four is just smack it on over the top. That ball coming from a clearance from the Sturt defence only as far as Ali Atkins and then taking on that strike herself. See how, she deli how delighted she was with it as that early goal, three minutes after half-time. 3-0, go Adelaide City. So last week we did see Sturt make double subs at about the hour mark. I wonder if we'll see that a little bit earlier this week. The need for change now that they've conceded an early goal in the second 45. Sturt in their first match of the WMPL, going 4-0 down to Adelaide Comets. Won't want a repeat of the same in round two. This is perhaps a side where if they can manage a goal, that might just spark some confidence in, in the side. Sturt looking to get one back. Cleared away though, looking for Florence Russell, that ball was. Bianca Gray. Ball put in. Cleared away only for the corner. Good opportunity here for Sturt. Someone will 
be tasked with going to get that ball later from well it's like a construction site next door <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps one of Sturt's best chances so far. Make something of this one. Trying to take it quickly and catch LA City by surprise. Ball there. coming in. Needs the strike. Still with the opportunity here. So close to Nina Yamada there. To get the ball on target. Alice McCauley. Good ball for McLeod. One of the goal scorers from tonight's match. Nora Pete. Guiardo. All the way wide, but cleared out. Russell making the run forward, having to go against Lezinski. Only going back to Abby Lucas in the end. Poor pass cut out there. Sturt still battling for it to just get it. Ali Atkins winning out there. Making the run out wide here. Bianca Gray now receiving the ball and playing it backwards. Good through ball. Battling there. City throw. Gotten rid of by Sturt. Florence Russell. Intercepted there, unable to get past. Sino playing the ball out wide for Guiardo. Sliding in there was Elston. Might have hurt herself in the protest, however, but there is a, an Adelaide City player down as well. Yeah, Sino down, unfortunately. Looks like she just overextended a little bit. Elston for Sturt on the ground now, now getting treated by the trainer and Alana Asino. Just getting up off her feet now. Looks like okay to continue. And it looks like Sturt might also be readying a substitute as well. Sanguine with the, the bib off. <laughs> Signed from Salisbury into this season. Not making the change yet. That change to come soon, you would imagine. Ball coming in from Ursino. Headed only upwards. Now cleared away for Sturt, needing to get away out of their own box quickly. Now that sub. Coming at the next break in play. 
fooling me. Now that's up to you to come. Kaylee Wakeling to come off in place of Sanglin set. Number 10 for Sturt. Instead, going from range, bit too high, however. No question if that one was just quite the right position there. They did have Lynn Open, who had just come on, almost could have had an instant impact there. Pressing from front now, a stir. Getting it back. And another substitute this time for Adelaide City. It'll be one of the three goal scorers for tonight coming off Grace Abbey. In place comes Chrissy Zikos. Great shift there from Grace Abbey and also really great to see Chrissy running back onto the park because last week she was on for all of about 20 minutes before being subbed off um, with an injury and it actually, <laughs> at the time it looked quite severe. She had to be carried off by DeMarco on the train and so really great to see her back on her feet and back in the squad. That turn not working out too well for Sturt. Only now getting a back with the ball. Good run forward by Saito. The ball through. Russell attempting to turn. Has Lynn on the left. Still running with the ball is Florence Russell. Set. Unable to get to it. Back with it is Saito. Delivering the ball in, only to the path of Adelaide City players to be cleared away and dealt with. Adelaide City's turn now. See how that nice little spark there from Sturt since Lynn has come on. Adds a little bit of excitement to the side. Sturt only clearing away. Just needing to get rid of the ball. To stop Adelaide City from attacking. Atkins. Florence Russell trying to chase after. Guiardo, set, skating the ball upwards, making Adelaide City reset.
Adelaide City throw in taken by Gray. And they'll get another here. Accepted here. Still being chased after. Just at the owl mark here at Adelaide City Park. the scoreline here, part of this double header. With the men's team to play FK Beograd right after. In round four of the men's MPL. And, <coughs> sorry, pardon me. The rest of the WMPL we played tomorrow afternoon as well. Triple header at Jeps Cross. A part of that with uh, a cup rematch to be played between Adelaide Comets and Salisbury Inter. With Haruna Sugihara playing against her former side. Be very interesting, especially if he scores against them. Comets, of course, coming off that 4-0 win against her with Inter. Losing in that grand final rematch, 1-0 to the NTC. Great day of football tomorrow in the WNPL and the WSL as well. Full central with Pete. Half effort there. City is happy to slow the game down, I think, at the moment. The advantage of a 3 0 up. Ball cleared forwards. Well done. By Adelaide City, Pete with it. Great. Atkins. Back with the captain. McCauley. Off the back of Alana Asino. Set chasing after this one, trying to win it back for Sturt. All the way back with McCauley. It's quite beautiful to watch City play up from the back. <laughs> we have touched on how established that uh, centre back pairing is. They obviously trust each other quite a lot, but they very much just are able to reset quite. Atkins recovering. Now Pete with it. Back out wide. Cleared away by Kurumi Saito. Touchdown by Yamada. Over the top. Russell unable to outpace. Her opposing defender. Just don't get the free kick, however. It's interesting to watch the battle up there. Obviously, Flo has speed, but the city defence, they've got physicality behind them. I think that's what's getting Sturt undone. Attempted for the 
the wide right. Unable to get to. Abby. Asino. Looking for the ball over the top, but not a good enough pass to reach. Crowd's building really nicely here at Adelaide City Park. Friday night under lights football. It's a tad freezing, but <laughs> <laughs> good weather otherwise. Adelaide City still capable of getting the fourth of tonight and the eighth of their season possibly. Good battle there between Atkins and Sunkist. Already got one tonight. It will be interesting to see where Stoke goes from here because they have quite a different bench to last week. They do still have Louis Sava available, who was subbed on about the hour mark last week, but Olivia, who also came on, isn't there. Then we've got Leslie, who started last week. She's on the bench, but I'm wondering whether she's nursing, nursing a bit of an injury. And that's why we aren't seeing her in the starting 11. She hasn't been warming up with the side. So I don't think she'll be able to come on. So then that kind of just leaves Ruby and Charlotte potential game changes for Sturt to spur something. Asino. Couldn't get the touch well underneath her. the shoulder there <laughs> as we see an Adelaide City sub Perry Weeks to come on and that sub tells us Adelaide City still going for it <laughs> very very capable of scoring goals Perry Weeks replacing a goal scorer and Daphne McLeod onto the bench now. Straight into the game, but unfortunately offside. <laughs> About 20 minutes left in this one. First game of round two of the WMPL. Opportunity here for City. Taking the strike on. Oh. Off the crossbar. I would have personally loved for that to go in for Kohado. She's had the year off with her ACL injury. That would have been an almost near perfect return for her. As we said, City more than capable of getting another. Weeks. Corner for Adelaide City. Mm. 
interesting to see what routine they go with now that Grace Abbey is off. The kind of aerial threat is not quite there. So they smack this one a bit lower, like I've said. If I could see the corner from here, I'd tell you. Looks to be the in swinger. Chaos in the box and it's gone in. Not too sure who, but as we said, Adelaide City, more than capable to get that fourth than they have done. It's potentially Macaulay, I reckon, the way she's celebrating on the <laughs> sideline here. <laughs> we love when defenders score goals. Yep. Just that confirmation there, you might have heard Alice Macaulay getting the fourth for Adelaide City. These are kind of similar to goals that Sturt conceded last week where they're just giving people too much time and space. Not Sturt, not what Sturt would have wanted in, in their first season up in the WMPL four. Neil losses twice in a row so far. There was that substitute, that sturdy ring that you talk about, that you spoke about, Haley. Yeah, looking to have Louis have a comeback on. Similar timing to last week. Connor, cut back. Russell just couldn't get the perfect connection on it. Yeah, good positioning and right idea. not pinpoint enough that was looking for Florence Russell Adelaide City Piri Weeks off the bench Look at the space. to try and make an impact good challenge there by the goalkeeper Tuvi One touch play there, Weeks still with the ball. The cut back, well blocked off. City and Sturt both scrambling with it in there. Atkins putting the ball in, headed away. City back with it. Either side unable to keep the ball under control. But pace of the game slowed back down with this long ball. Well done by Connor. Looking for Russell. Atkins. Pete. Piri Weeks already making that impact off the bench. As we saw by however many opportunities we had there in that yeah. <laughs> in that minute or so. Yeah, maybe 4-0 four four nil up, but there was about a third or a fourth effort there from Perry Weeks. Such an exciting player. You know, she can play midfield. She can play forward. She can't score goals. Onside there. Isabella Connor. Goes past one, goes past two. Abby Lucas does well to come out. Sturt will get the corner. A great opportunity. Yeah, you just got to wonder what could have been a corner's my first time there. But she did dance around the defense pretty well as well. I think just her final touch, just letting her down that little bit too much on it. Florence Russell to take this corner. Russell. 
still attempting to clear away Adelaide City. That ball or oh, just going out. 15 minutes left for Sturt to get something back in this one. And here that substitute comes. in this past five minutes or so yes, yes, yes. getting a bit more into this one yeah they're definitely glimpses of something from Sturt we did just see Rose come off for Louis Rose wasn't in the side at all last week so interesting to see if they're kind of experimenting with what works what lineup works Offside there. Headed away for the stirt throw. Taken by Yamada. Dead. Isabella Connor. Yes. Don't think that makes it five. <laughs> <laughs> really had a Macaulay brace. <laughs> Good finish though. <laughs> have to say. <laughs> Deflected ball. Big touch. Unfortunately for Sturt. Sturt get their first WNPL goal tonight at Adelaide City Park. That ball just stayed in. Much the disappointment of the Sturt Lions bench, I think. Ursino. Uh, discussion about the ball or do I, I do think it did just, <laughs> just, just say it quietly <laughs> we do have the stirt bench right below us <laughs> yes. just over 10 minutes left in this one play we have seen from Sturt throughout the game. Particularly exciting to watch Connor. I think she's going to be the one who creates something. She's had a few of those runs in behind on this right side. Had an opportunity herself. Yeah, she's still running strong. Doesn't appear to be flagging. Atkins. Connor battling with Weeks. Flaunt Russell. Offside. That one perhaps a little bit closer. 
than the possible out of the ball, I thought. Has <laughs> <laughs> been more than happy to have a chat throughout this match with the officiating staff. She's been a bit more quiet, but she's been on her feet the whole game. Atkins with the pass, then to Guayara. DeMarco. One back by Atkins. Onside is Zikos. Piri making the run. Gets to Nora Pete. Too much on that ball. Goal kick. Double sub from City. The Kate Seaton. And Brooke Gilchrist to come on for the black and white. And again, potential goal scorers. <laughs> City are not, not sitting back in this 4 0 lead. <laughs> but great to see that you know, some of the younger signings are getting some game time. Gilchrist has come on over from NTC. Be Alana Asino to make way. And Guajardo as well. Great to see her play, you know, an 80 minute stint there. As we mentioned earlier, she did have a year off for the ACL injury, but she's come back very strong, you know, playing majority of the game. In pre season comp, she scored a hat trick, <laughs> so it's like she never left. Sturt also making a substitute. Ruby Fulliger, the number seven to come on in his closing stages of this one. Sturt ball, Sunquist. to just move back slightly. Ball over the top. Yamada. Captain Bianca Gray on the ball. McCauley to Atkins. Back with McCauley. Chasing is Kate Seaton and gets to it as well. Brilliant pace shown there. Still battling for it even though they're 4-0 up. Yeah, 
repeat. Now with Atkins. Back with Alice McCauley. And now Sophie Leszczynski. DeMarco to substitute Gilchrist. Good pass. One more through the middle. Will be cut out only as far as Bianca Gray. Poor pass by Ali Atkins right into the path. Sturt still wanting something out of this. Chester down. City players asking for a handball. Just under five minutes left. Looks to be the three points for Adelaide City. But Sturt have definitely shown signs of promise for this WMPL season. Hard one because obviously the scoreline is the same for Sturt as last week, 4 0, but their second half has improved from last week. You know, they conceded three in the second half last week, only two this week, and we've definitely seen sparks from them. So I think that's something that they take away and move into round three with. Paul Sturt only just being promoted from the WSL, first season in the WMPL. And they only had the one season in the WSL as well, so <laughs> very, very young side in terms of competitive experience across all leagues. And that can be a hard thing mentally to deal with as well, that you've kind of had so much success in that one year, the transition to WMPL, and perhaps not getting those same results. That can be a a golf in quality sometimes between the WSL and the WNPL. Yeah, I know, I know Flinders mentioned this last year as well that they basically had an undefeated season and then it was a learning curve to kind of mentally process not winning every week. Mistake there. Ball. Going out. Russell. Set furthest forward now for Sturt. Still making that run. Right idea for the ball. Perry Weeks. Ball just deflecting slightly. Now with Nini Yamada. Just about to enter additional time here at Adelaide City Park. More football coming your way with Adelaide City versus FK Beograd in the men's MPL right after this one at the same ground as a part of this double header. 
But as this one starts to close, Haley, what have you made of the match as a whole, especially for Sturt's second game in the WNPL? Yeah, I think for Sturt, perhaps this is exposing a bit of an over-reliance on Flo Russell up top. Um, do they need to do a bit of a Flinders and Sankote halfway through the season? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, look for some more options up there. But obviously a very dominant display from Adelaide City. And I think it speaks to the depth of their squad that you know their defence is so sound that their bench is just full of attackers and they just continually sub one off for another one and have more scoring opportunities. Certainly hasn't been an easy start for Sir having to play face West Adelaide who look to be rejuvenated this season. And now Adelaide City have Uni and Burkala in round three and round four respectively before facing Salisbury and so you would say definitely winnable fixtures in those next two yeah probably yeah a lot more to kind of grow upon from these first two weeks Ali Atkins but I think it also speaks volumes of kind of what City have been doing over the last two seasons and that last year was a bit of a, a rebuild for them even though they still finished fourth and you know they made it all the way to the semi-final and only got knocked out on penalties and retaken ones at that. <laughs> um, but you know they've been building long-term towards this balance of youth and experience and having players come up through the ranks and even having players who have left pause while Perry Weeks later on there. Oh, Nora P, sorry. Um, Adelaide City, happy to slow down the game. But as you said, Adelaide City just in that rebuilding stage. Yeah, that I think this is the season where they reap the rewards for the what they the work they put in last season. And we see them return as to a powerhouse as they take this one out for nil. Full time here at Adelaide City Park, the way of the home side. Goals coming from four different goal scorers in this one. But again, a, a great for Adelaide City to get three points after having to come from behind last week. Yeah, absolutely. And the strongest start to this season, as I know we talked about last season, but last season they had quite a slow start. This season we've got the draw and now we've got a win and a quite a dominant one at that. So I think they'll take a lot of confidence in that start. And perhaps that helps them build you know, the position on the table closer to the end of the season where the A-League W players come back. Goals coming from Grace Abbey, Daphne McLeod, Alice McCauley and Ali Atkins. Some bangers in there too, Absolutely. must say. I think we'll definitely see them featuring Goal of the Week again and we know that the Adelaide City voting contingent is quite strong. <laughs> <laughs> Usually gets them over the line, so could have a really early contender there actually from Ali Atkins. More WNPL action coming tomorrow afternoon. If you're staying with us, join us for the NPL game between Adelaide City and FKB Rad. But Haley, you must leave now. <laughs> Sorry, I'll go warm up. <laughs> go get myself a, a panini. I've seen a nice picture of a panini on, on the socials. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Haley, for joining me tonight. Uh, and keep watching your football. More after this one and more over the weekend.